Then going from one Jake Gyllenhaal movie to another Jake Gyllenhaal movie, but completely different. That one was set on the streets of L.A. This is set out in space. So the other day, what did you think of the movie that we watched? Again, you went in blind, not knowing anything about this. Oh, man. Life. Life. So this is a 2017 sci-fi by director Daniel Espinosa. I knew nothing going in, and that was awesome. That was the best way to watch this film. I am really liking doing that more and more. Just kind of like, ah, whatever, just put it on. I'm going to figure it out. I love throwing movies at you in that way as well. That I've got an idea what's coming, or what kind of film it is, or maybe I even know quite a lot about it. And then you watch it, and I just get to enjoy reactions. (laughs) This one definitely caused some reactions. So Life is about... Um, a team of scientists up in a uh, satellite. I think it's the ISS, the International Space Station. Oh, it's the International Space Station. They're in the ISS and they have brought a sample back from the planet Mars. Yeah, it's uh, been picked up by a, a probe and they've got to catch the probe, um, process the sample and then bring it back to Earth is the original plan. And I think that's all I'll say because it was that just blew my mind. So we won't say too much, but I would say this movie is at least somewhat inspired by things like Alien. Oh yeah, for sure. It's not full on horror, but it is very tense sci-fi. I say it borders on the horror front. Now, in terms of the cast, you have Jake Gyllenhaal, we have Ryan Reynolds... Rebecca Ferguson. What did you think of the way it built tension? Excellent. Excellent job of building tension. Especially if you're into sci-fi stuff, you're kind of in it sometimes for the science. You just want to know what's going on. Mm. You want to explore with them. You want to understand new things just like they are. So that pulled me in right away. They have a sample from Mars. We're learning new things about it every day. We're learning the environments that it that it reacts to the what you know just treating it as a science project that drew me in automatically. Now, after we'd seen it, I mentioned to you that when it was released, there was this little theory going around, and there was a bit of a reason for having it. Uh, the fan theory was that this could have been a prequel to the movie Venom, because the writers of this had previously written one of the potential scripts for Venom. That would have been amazing. How do you think it would have been if it had been revealed to tie into that universe at the end of it? I would have lost my mind because absolutely, I see it. I get it. I think it maybe almost was written in that with that in oh, mind. Oh, yeah, I could see that. And you know what? That is how it is in my head. <laughs> so I thought it was a really solidly directed film. Now, the director then went on to make an even more famous movie. Morbius. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I definitely liked life better than Morbius. (laughs) But yet, so many people have seen Morbius, especially as it started trending and being ridiculed online. Uh, It's Morbin time and all of that. But actually, do you think that this is the more recommendable movie? Absolutely. I loved it. It has, it's genuinely stuck with me since we've watched it. It, I've been searching for more movies like it every week. Like it, it's, and I don't really know what it is about it. I don't know if it's the, the way they built the tension, the way the characters worked together. Mm. It, it, the fact that it's all in one Confined place. Yeah. yeah. I really like shows like that. Like here's a room, figure it out. Like kind of, I love, I love movies like that. And there's no easy way out or in for characters. You know that we're not going to throw in a whole bunch of other people later on. We know that these characters are not going to be able to just open the door and walk away. And I think you're right. That's one of the things that makes things like uh, Alien work so well. So it really does pull at those thematic points and those plot ideas that have worked so well for sci-fis in the past. It is very interesting. It also is very, like, it makes you feel... (laughs) I don't know if that's 
Gives you the heebie-jeebies. Yes. In a way that Alien did at some point, Mm -hmm. but this movie does throughout. And I'll tell you why. Can we get into the spoilers? I don't see why not. So we're going to talk maybe spoilers about life for... A second. (laughs) Just a a minute or two. So if you really don't want to know, maybe hit the skippy button on your your podcast playing device. Um, But if you've already seen life or you don't mind spoilers... Go on, what would you like to spoil about it? This sample that they bring back from Mars, well, because they've done different experimentations with its environment, it is now reacting and kind of growing as a life form. Mm -hmm. And it is absolutely beautiful. Oh, the 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 design of it is amazing. The whole movie, it just keeps getting more beautiful. Mm. But it is dangerous. And... I don't know what it is, but, you know, Alien looks ugly. Like, ooh, that's creepy. I don't like that. Yeah, the xenomorphs are horrific. Yeah. But this is beautiful. Mm. And you want to interact with it. It has an almost angelic appearance at some points. So, yeah. Yeah, like it looks like it has... It looks like a snake with wings at some points. Like, it's just so pretty. So, it freaks me out even more. Mm. That it is so dangerous. And the fact that it is not similar to Alien, I guess. It's not really bent on killing. I think there's a really good plot point there that it only reacts in that way because they tried to wake it up using you know, electric shocks. Mm. That it maybe wasn't always malevolent. It just reacts because it felt like it was under attack, as many animals do. They, they're they not generally aggressive, but if they feel under threat, they will fight back. And I guess I, I maybe really liked that because it felt very real. Mm. It felt like, oh, this could really happen. Like, not really. Like, there's not aliens on Mars. But I'm just saying, like, I, it felt like if you were in a situation with an unknown animal, undiscovered, mm-hmm. and you test it like that, yeah, it's going to feel attacked and attack you back. These people are trying to hurt me. I gotta get out. If any of our listeners are listening to us from Mars, we're very sorry for what my wife just said. (laughs) We did not mean to question your existence. (laughs) But yeah, it it does ground it in a a level of believability that I think works so well for a movie like this. Because it helps to really draw you into it. If you go, oh no, this is ridiculous, I can't believe it. You just dismiss it very early on. But no, it draws you in. You want to see how things develop and what they try and how the and how the life form reacts to them. It's brilliant. It's a really good movie. And such a shame that people didn't really turn out to see it that much. I believe it was, well, it started off at like number four in the box office in its first week of release and dropped to number eight in its second week because there were some other things out that, that really pushed it out. Um, it made its money back just about. But it wasn't a big hit and I haven't heard many people talk about it. But maybe they should. It really does hold up very well as a a sci-fi thriller. Yeah, if you like Alien, you will like this. In my opinion, this is a fantastic standalone film. And it, yeah, it's just very good. Now, another reason that I think sometimes movies don't do so well in the States is when they give them a higher rating. Mm. It makes families not go see it, obviously, because they're not going to take their kids to go see that. Um, But I thoroughly enjoyed it. (laughs) Yeah, it was was a good sci-fi action film for us. Yeah. 